congratulations to Football New South Wales for putting on this wonderful conference. I'm honoured to be a part of it. I hope you're all well and thriving despite the challenges we've all been facing. Let's remember that however difficult the timing is right now, that we love this sport. It's bigger than us, it provides us with joy, memories, experiences and for many, a living too. Ever since being a small boy watching my local team at Old Trafford in Manchester, I dreamed of being a part of this great game of football. I've watched and played all my life and over the last decade and a half, I've been able to contribute professionally in various ways. Board member, technical advisor, educator and mentor, and a fan too. I'm very thankful. I want to take you back just a few years though. After a decade leading the Wiggles business, I set up X Venture to focus on enhancing individual and team performance. Initially, I was advising a number of global organisations and building and creating postgraduate education in leadership and teamwork. We were also sharing knowledge through other people's stories, working with people like Ronnie Kahn at Oz Harvest, Nelson Mandela's head of VIP services, Rory Stain, the Queen and Elton John's manager, John Reed, and even Meatloaf. In the midst of all this, I was having a chat with my good mate, Terry McFlynn, someone I'd known for a number of years and who I hold in enormous regard. Throughout his playing career, we'd catch up and have a chat. He's always been an expansive thinker. He even came to one of my MBA classes once. Anyhow, through the conversation, Terry invited me into the Sydney FC camp to explore how I could assist Graham Arnold, Terry and the team to improve the performance for the upcoming season. Open and honest conversations took place around the issues that were faced. Some real challenges, but together we concluded we could change the environment to create a winning mindset. My role was to focus on the team's mentality and emotional agility and intelligence and integrate this with the main elements of technical, tactical and physical elements being delivered by the key staff. Now at that time, no one had really put this type of program together. What would it include? How would I integrate? How would I engage the players and the staff? Several key themes emerged in the area of work. Firstly, as this was all new, I would need to ensure a significant transfer of knowledge. Secondly, it would need to fit into an already full timetable without becoming a labour for players in particular. Thirdly, it needed to become something that players and staff alike could see as a positive experience which would enhance their performance. I focused my attention on several key principles which historically have been identified as soft skills. Now the truth is, they're the hardest skills to master. I know this personally and professionally, and also through the challenges in finding the very best people to enhance current team performance. So let's take a look at the focus of the work. Emotional intelligence and agility. This is the understanding of your own emotional state and the emotional states of those around you and your ability to manage and influence them for greater outcomes. Secondly, leadership how any individual can affect the performance of others at key moments through effective leadership. Thirdly, communication. How an understanding and an application of the best in communication standards can bring about high levels of performance. Fourthly, culture. How the way we do things in our environment can influence outcomes positively or negatively. And finally, resilience how our ability to overcome disappointment and learn from our mistakes quickly can give us a big advantage. Bring all this together to ensure every person, whatever their ability, is building a performance improvement mindset. Now you might say this is all common sense, of course. Probably true, but as we all know, common sense isn't that common. In fact, in that first year at Sydney, Arnie threw me the challenge of helping him affect such a positive change that we would achieve a 20% improvement in our results. Crazy, eh? An incredible team performance all round led the team to a massive improvement.
but no question that the improvement in essential skills was an important factor which continues on to this day at Sydney FC. Now, most recently I've been also helping Terry in their youth academy in Perth, working alongside Richie Garcia and Steve McGarry to help improve the young players on on-field communication skills. The youth teams have had a crack of a season despite the COVID challenges focused on just this. I've been working in this area for many years, from the Kids Hospital Westmead, to the ASX, to the Wiggles, to Westpac Bank, and to more recently the Socceroos, and helping our players and coaches across the world involved in the Socceroos, including people like Matty Ryan, Aidan Rustic, Harry Sutar, and Adam Taggart. I firmly believe that building skills in these areas are going to pay us dividends. I believe it's a way to give us an edge and can be a real area of progress. So much do I believe it that we also built two TV series and a measurement tool to help our understanding of this further. We call this the Earl Measure. Now if you want to use it to get a simple handle on where you sit in these areas, you can take the free survey here. So far, we've got over a thousand data sets from lots of different people, ages, backgrounds, and cultures. Here are a couple of examples of the results. Now, the recent changes we've experienced in our world have made such skills even more important and significant. We know that people's resilience has been really tested in recent months. So too has been our ability to focus on other people's needs, the jostling for position and finding fast solutions for ourselves under such difficult situations has become the norm. Football is a fluid environment. Just look at our A-League since the grand final. It's experiencing more change than ever before. We also know there is a deep concern with the quality of leadership we have across the globe. Have we got leaders we can trust who can remain calm under pressure? This is a key issue for football coaches too. Get it right, you have a team who will follow you to the ends of the earth. Get it wrong and you've got young people frightened, disillusioned and even leaving the game. My view of the mind is based on many years of studying, researching social and behavioural sciences, communication and neurobiology and working with high-performing teams. The mind can continue to grow and prosper by developing what neuroscientist Dan Siegel calls mindful insight, tuning in to our eight senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, your own body, your thoughts, and your connections to others. Just imagine having a flexible, adaptable, coherent, energized, and stable mind at all times. Being able to be open, observant, and objective, the mind is so powerful, constantly changing, responding and leading due to the circumstances we face, organising and reorganising within and connecting to all parts of us and those we're connecting to, constantly regulating the flow of energy and information. As you learn, your mind expands into other learning and as you communicate this learning, it will take you into other relationships which creates more and more learning. The challenge now, of course, is how do we teach, coach, build and give access to these skills effectively? How do we do this quickly to make our game a place which has leaders who are providers of social change as well as giving us the edge? We think we might have the answer. Now, before I share this, I want to draw your attention to a key aspect of any new learning. We need to understand how do we really learn? Now in building learning programmes for any group or individual, Socceroos, Sydney FC, Melbourne City, Wellington Phoenix, Perth Glory or the Australian women's cricket team, I tend to follow a model which I've been using for a number of years. It's called the Ages Learning Model. It considers four important elements in making learning stick. Firstly, enabling attention of learners. Secondly, generating insights takes time. Thirdly, emotional connection with the subject matter improves learning. And fourthly, spacing the learning in terms of repetition, speed and time improves learning. Put in simple terms, make your stuff engaging, fun and interesting. 
and also that learning is about minimising errors. The more you do, the better you become. Every time you're delivering something new to an audience, each of these elements need to be considered. What is learning? How do we know when people are learning? What do we need to do to ensure we maximise learning? In its simplest definition, to learn is to form an internal model of the external world. Now, in most cases, this model can be applied because we've experienced it before and we know it works. When we communicate it to others, they understand this too. Sometimes this model is more complex than that. Our experience, interaction and know-how is moulded with our unconscious thinking, which grabs hold of creative ideas that might not even exist and moulds them into something new. This brings about new possibilities. We might get excited and understand them, but we struggle to communicate them, and others struggle to understand them too. Now, being at the forefront of innovation is often challenging because the external world hasn't seen the model before. Imagine turning dreams into reality. I reckon you've all got a few blockbuster movies right there from your dreams. The key to effective learning, of course, is to be able to share and transfer knowledge. It sounds easy, doesn't it? But to do this, we need to try and see the world from someone else's lenses as well as our own. Try putting on someone else's glasses for just five minutes and grab the things around you. It's very difficult. Do this for five minutes and then take them off and try again. Your brain will have adapted to the new lenses. This is what is required to deliver effective learning. Okay, let me rewind the tape a little. Can you remember what it was like pre-COVID? Most of your life and work like mine was probably face to face. In my world, I was just planning to launch a brand new project in event cinemas. COVID scuppered that plan. I was also just about to deliver another activity into the global Tottenham Hotspur programme at University of Wollongong. Squashed, like the whole of the university sector, face-to-face -face learning had gone. And then the plans to go with the Socceroos to Kathmandu for the Nepal World Cup qualifier and to the Copa were dashed as well. Just to put the icing on the cake, the few weeks of helping the Wanderers get back on track pre-COVID also fell into a heap. As too did a major research programme with the Perth Glory Youth Academy. That was on the professional side of life. Then on the personal side, three of my children's weddings cancelled, booked, cancelled and booked again. The importance of face-to-face -face connectivity became clear in my mind that this genuine collaboration has become very difficult. The ability for us to share ideas, stories and build deeper and more meaningful relationships for us to grow as individuals has been affected greatly. Now it's great that groups like Zoom, Cisco, Microsoft and Livestorm have been able to help us connect in some way and the capability to be in different places whilst communicating at some level is incredible. However, if we apply the ages principles, it's still difficult. Try chatting to those responsible for delivering online lectures every day. And then there's the students. Then there are the company Zoom meetings too. A difficult situation to learn. So at XVenture, myself and the small team that we have put our heads together to create something of a model, a platform if you like, which would fulfill several things. Tick the boxes of effective learning, provide easy access to collaborate and enable us to deliver these essential skills to our Aussie coaches. A big but exciting challenge. The solution we found has come in the form of virtual reality. Since 2016, I've been interested in this. Initially, the fun of it all, then started to wonder if I could use it as a learning tool. The first time as a genuine tool for learning was actually with Sydney FC at the beginning of the 2018 season building communication and cohesion between players and staff. This followed up with activities in our XVenture TV series and then a rollout into major corporations. Any opportunity to test the validity of this, I did. I remember even sitting with Jamie McLaren in Al Ain during the Asia Cup and playing around with virtual reality headsets. The responses every time was terrific. When I returned, I built some learning programs for Baxter Health and then the Tottenham Hotspur program, both providing positive responses to the experience. 
Now, as COVID hit, these experiences, plus our virtual reality work with others, such as Woolworths and Football Coaches Australia, gave us confidence and led us to the next generation of learning. The development and building of essential skills and enabling collaboration, adaptability and effective teamwork in a COVID social distancing environment. Since the first outbreak of COVID, we've built 12 different virtual worlds, delivered them across over 600 teams into 20 countries. Organisations who have a deep learning culture, who realise that future models are going to have to be different, have grabbed this new solution. HP, EY, Gymshark, Adidas, ABB, Western Sydney University, Ivy Business School, Australian women's cricket team, rugby sevens Olympic team, cycling, water polo, hockey and canoeing. Then there's Melbourne City and Perth Glory coaches too. In February, I'm excited to tell you we will be launching a world first. Football Coach Australia is one organisation who have understood the need for a new way of learning. Together, we've come to bring and create a new model. The FCA X Venture Essential Skills Curricula featuring all the five areas I mentioned earlier. Emotional intelligence and agility, leadership, communication, culture, and resilience. Built on experience, empirical and scientific evidence, and the best in contemporary thinking in the high-performing team environment. All in a unique virtual world, fun and engaging learning, and accessible from your home computer or laptop. This means that any coach across the whole of the state of New South Wales and beyond will get to learn about these things and will get CPD points for completing the modules. Australia leading the way. Australian coaches making a difference to all its young players, wherever they may be, however old they are. Even the over 45s at Avalon Beach. Perhaps it's worth looking at a few examples to give you an idea. You can now study in a virtual world using your curiosity to find out more about your chosen subject. Go hunt and learn and find out. You can also undertake a learning experience as a group. Here are a group of Olympians undertaking a team-based virtual reality competition we created whilst learning at the same time. Here's another example. Gymshark is a major sporting apparel company in the UK with 4.1 million Instagram followers and are growing significantly. They're partnering with XVenture to collaborate and learn in a more effective way. To introduce this totally new way of learning, we've also created a fun experience for anyone, the FCA XVenture Mind Games Cup. All coaches are invited to participate. Just imagine the connection, the collaboration and the fun too. It doesn't matter where you're from, what league you're playing in, this is a chance for you to experience the new way of learning. And if you're up for this, your growth has no ceiling, no boundaries. Sharing knowledge, sharing the lessons of life, and understand that every day is an opportunity to improve our performance and grow. This gives you an idea of what you're up for. First step, come have a new experience. Experience the new way of learning, firstly, by putting your team in for the FCA XV Mind Games Cup, and then look out for the new essential skills curricula to be launched in February, which will provide you all with a new dimension in thinking and provide a new set of skills to achieve even higher levels of performance, whatever role you are in the sport. If you'd like more information on the FCA XV Mind Games Cup, or the essential skills curricula, please feel free to drop me a line at experience at xventure.com.au. Wishing you all the very best. I'm here to help make our sport the best there is.